I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Greetings to you, our worldwide web church family. This is Church on the Rock Baptist, emanating live from our sanctuary at 2995 Guillermo Buena Road in San Jose, California. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, your automobiles, your places of business, or wherever you may be viewing us to let you know that it is no secret what God can do. What is done for others, he'll do the very same thing for you, you, and yes, even you. So you pull up a chair, gather your family and friends, like and share this page. Let everyone know that Pastor Moore and Church on the Rock are on the air. And for the next few moments, let's worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. We want to hear from you. You may give us a call at 408-532-ROCK. Or go to our website at churchontherockbaptist.com and send us a message. Every now and then, type amen, praise the Lord, sing, preach, hallelujah, amen. But let us know that this outreach ministry is a blessing to your life. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. He's still God and he's never failed us yet. And we believe that everything will be all right someday. Oh.
Jasmine Smith, May Johnson, Pastor Larry Ellis, Pastor Henry L. Davis II, Weta Davis in Detroit, Kirk and Jackie Ford Jackson, Marla Sterrett, Brother Don Rubis, Walter Louise and Lynette Crawley, Helen Jones and Hayward, Hope Richard in East Palo Alto, Sandra McNeil, Stephanie Gaines in San Francisco, Susan Vargas Rincones, Diane Miles in New Orleans, Louisiana, Brother Tobias Cotton serving in the armed services. We are praying for you today. All those fighting COVID-19, all those who've lost their jobs, and all frontline workers, Church on the Rock is praying for you. If you're hurting this morning, wherever you are, I want you to lay your hand where you're hurting. And we're going to talk to God together. You've got to have faith in God. And he'll use the medicine. That he'll use the doctor. And if he decides not to use any of that, by his Holy Spirit power, that he will heal you and take your pain away. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we, your children, come before your awesome presence on this first Sunday of the third month of the year. Thankful and grateful for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord, for blessings that we didn't even ask you for, but that you gave to us anyway. Thank you for last night's rest and this morning's rising. Thank you that while we slept and slumbered, you did not let hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. As a matter of fact, Lord, you did not allow thieves to break in, nor fire to break out. And for that today, we say thank you. For putting food on the table, clothes on our backs, and shoes on our feet. Uh, we do not take them for granted, for we know that there are many without. Uh, but you had mercy on us, uh, and you clothed us, and fed us, uh, and sheltered us. Uh, you kept us, Lord, from sickness uh, and disease. Uh, another week uh, without COVID. Uh, and today uh, we say thank you. Uh, oh God, uh, you've been good to us. Uh, you've been merciful to us. Uh, you've been better to us uh, than we have been uh, to ourselves. Uh, we just pause to say uh, thank you. Uh, much obliged. Uh, we are grateful uh, and uh, we are thankful. Uh, our Father, uh, we confess uh, that we have not lived up to the perfect example that you set for us in Jesus. Uh, we have sinned against you uh, in thought, word, uh, and in deed. Uh, and our Father, uh, we're sorry uh, for our sins. Uh, we ask uh, that you would please forgive us, uh, clean us up uh, from the inside out, uh, and make us uh, what you would have uh, us to be. Uh, Father, you told us uh, to pray one for another. Uh, and there are many names on the prayer list. Uh, I don't know what they're asking you for, uh, but Lord, uh, I know you know uh, all about it. Uh, would you please uh, look on Victoria Baines today? Uh, God, uh, let your healing hand uh, rest on her. Uh, Father, uh, would you look on Mary Ann Roberts right now? Uh, Lord, uh, I know you can do anything, uh, but you can uh, not fail. Uh, we pray uh, for traveling grace, uh, for Karen uh, and Ronald uh, as they make way uh, down south. Uh, Lord, uh, there are so many of 
others uh, who are worrying uh, about how they're going to make it. Uh, put food uh, on the table. Uh, provide uh, for their children. Uh, but God, uh, I know uh, that you are a way maker. Uh, we've had experience with you. Uh, we've called you in the past. Uh, and you came uh, to see about us. Uh, oh Lord. That you can do it again. We pray for those in authority. We pray for our nation's leaders. Be with President Biden. Give him wisdom. Give him knowledge. And lead him by your Holy Spirit as the world tries to get back to normal. Lord, help us to hold up the bloodstream.
to give. Turn around and wave to somebody and come in with say three ways to give. God bless you. The number three biblically represents divine wholeness, completeness, and perfection. If ever there was a desire to highlight an idea, thought, event, or noteworthy figure, in the Bible for their prominence, the number three was used to put a divine stamp of completion or fulfillment on the subject. The Trinity represents the completeness of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The gifts brought by the Magi to the Christ child represent a complete offering. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Christ rose from the grave on the third day to complete his divine Purpose. Three angels will complete the final word of God. According to Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 16, the first will command the earth to worship God. The second will declare the fall of Babylon. The third will declare that the mark of the beast is a sign of God's wrath. And as we will discover, the number three also finds its significance in the completeness of our giving. Giving is the only appropriate response that we can offer God for his gift of salvation. It is impossible to show our gratitude to him in any other way. And yet, it is the most difficult part of being a Christian because it requires us to be selfless and submissive. In fact, God expects us to give unto the Lord. God never does anything haphazardly or without purpose and definition. His omnipotence will not allow such flagrant irresponsibility. We serve a God of all power and supremacy who invincibly controls his every move through divine authority. And that includes his commands that center on our giving. So let's take a look at the three ways that God expects us to give. I didn't expect too many amens today because giving is a subject that y'all have a problem with. But I hope to help you to shout. Uh, when you realize uh, that giving uh, is good uh, for your soul. Uh, well, uh, let's look at the ways that God expects us to give. Uh, first, uh, give yourself uh, completely. Uh, turn around and wave at somebody and say, give yourself completely. Uh, give the Lord a hand of praise in the sanctuary, somebody. 
When I say that, uh, some of you conjure up visions of joining uh, a monastery or becoming uh, preachers. Uh, but of course, uh, that uh, would be foolish. Uh, we are not all called uh, to be preachers. Uh, let me say that again. Uh, we are not all called uh, to be preachers. Uh, but of course, my brothers and my sisters, uh, every Christian uh, has a role to play uh, in the building uh, of the kingdom uh, of God. Uh, there is certainly a calling uh, on every Christian life. Uh, God gives each of us gifts uh, for his use uh, in spreading uh, the word. Uh, we are many members, uh, yet uh, one uh, body. Uh, it is God's rightful expectation uh, that we will find ways uh, to use the gifts uh, and talents uh, he has given us uh, for his glory. Uh, giving uh, yourself uh, completely. Uh, means that you are submitting uh, to all uh, that God uh, has designed uh, for your life. Uh, when the Apostle James said, uh, submit yourselves uh, therefore to God, uh, resist the devil uh, and he will flee uh, from you. Uh, he was addressing uh, the manner uh, in which we give uh, ourselves uh, to the Lord. Uh, yeah, uh, he reminds us uh, that the devil uh, can get in the way uh, of how uh, we give uh, ourselves uh, to the Lord. Y'all, uh, there is nothing worse uh, than putting limits uh, on what God uh, can do uh, with you. Uh, many a ministry uh, has failed uh, because the servants uh, of the house uh, gave only leftovers uh, to God. Uh, God uh, doesn't want uh, a piece uh, of you. Uh, 
approach their finances. Uh, their budget uh, consists uh, of dividing the bills uh, between uh, the two uh, paychecks. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's uh, their plan. Uh, no plan for saving. Uh, no plan uh, for the unexpected. Uh, no plan uh, for their children's college. Uh, car repairs. Uh, replacement of appliances. Uh, clothing. Uh, Health care copays. Uh, and all of the other stuff uh, that comes up uh, for all those things. Uh, they just fly by the seat uh, of their parents. Uh, listen, y'all, uh, I come with news from God, uh, and I don't care who tells you any different. Uh, it's right here uh, in the book. Uh, God uh, has a plan, uh, a budget plan uh, for uh, his church. Uh, and if the gates of hell uh, are not going to prevail against it, uh, we need uh, to follow uh, Us, uh, to set aside the tithe uh, for him uh, and live uh, on the remaining uh, 90% uh, by learning how uh, to carefully uh, manage uh, his blessings. Uh, I know that there are some idiots uh, running around uh, talking about uh, tithing uh, is under the law. Uh, we don't have of that foolishness. Thou shalt not kill. That's in the Old Testament. Are you going to blow that out too? Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's under the law. Are you going to blow that out too? Honor your mother and your father. That your days may be long upon the land. That's in the Old Testament. Are you going to throw that out too? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's in the Old Testament. Are you going to throw that out too? Listen, church. I know we live in a world that costs a lot. All rent is high. Food is high. Clothes are high, but don't you think God knows about how high things are? He said, if you give the tenth, I will bless you. If you don't, I will curse you. And what does that mean? God's going to curse us? Well, consider this. You make a whole lot of money, but you end up with very little. Manage 
management part uh, is where we often fail. Uh, God blesses us uh, with an increase in salary. Uh, and the first thing we do uh, is spend it. Uh, a new car, uh, a new wardrobe, uh, new furniture. Uh, too often, uh, little thought uh, is given to how much God uh, should get. Uh, And the first thing we do uh, is plan uh, how it will benefit us. Uh, little thought uh, is given to how uh, it could benefit uh, the kingdom uh, of God. Uh, God uh, blesses us uh, with talent. Uh, and the first thing we do uh, is figure out how much money uh, we can make uh, with that talent. Uh, little thought uh, to how we can use our talent to the glory of God. Too often we fall into Satan's traps of living beyond our means. Our car runs fine, but we want a newer model. We have a but the ones in the window are calling our name. Our cell phone is still functioning perfectly, but we want the newer model. God's blessings can barely keep up with our wants and desires. Admit it, y'all. We all pray for more blessings. It follows then that our giving, both financially and in our service, must be proportional to the blessings that we receive from the Lord. In Luke 12 and 48, Jesus says, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. Are you ready to give according to your blessings? And then the final way to give is to give to those in need. Turn around and wave at your neighbor and say, give to those in need. Give the Lord a hand to praise. I'm finished, y'all. When I tell you that it's Christ-like to give, Jesus taught us to give without reservation. To the needy, the lost, the sick, and the downtrodden, our reputation in the community should be one of compassion and benevolence. Jesus said, if a man needs a coat, give him your coat too. Paul reminds us that we should always be hospitable and take care of those around us. The church must Guard uh, against becoming cold, uh, callous, uh, and carnal uh, in our attitude toward those uh, who are suffering uh, in uh, our midst, uh, who are the needy uh, among us. Uh, anyone uh, who has uh, a genuine need uh, that we uh, can meet. Uh, Needs come uh, in all shapes and sizes. Uh, we don't have to look far for opportunity uh, to encourage some uh, in times uh, of despair, uh, to strengthen some uh, in times uh, of weakness, uh, to guide someone uh, in times of danger, uh, to assure someone uh, in times uh, of anxiety, uh, to comfort someone uh, in times uh, of sorrow, uh, to inspire someone uh, in times uh, of difficulty, uh, to bless uh, someone uh, in times uh, of heartache uh, for all of us uh, who call ourselves Christians. 
friends. Until then, you hold up that flat state man. I am on the battlefield for my Just him.